How close were you to quitting? Um, oh, my concern was leading into the World Cup, really. Um, after last summer's games, I felt that uh, it might be possible that the debate over whether I should be manager or not and my presence might be divisive for the team. And I was a little bit concerned with the games in September that um, the reaction towards that creates a negativity around the team and I've been in teams where that can inhibit performance so what I wanted to was to see where we were coming out of the World Cup to see whether actually that was the right thing to stay um, and it felt that I think people uh, were pleased with our performances um, do I think we overachieved no I don't do I think we underachieved no I don't I think we actually won the games we should win but I think the way that we played and um, the manner of the performance against France showed people that we're improving still um, and that we are capable of you know, playing and beating these bigger teams. We'll come on to that and that particular game in a moment but you, you talk about the games were, where it made you question whether you wanted to stay and the reaction um, to that Did, but actually you got to a stage where you were going to announce that Qatar would be your last tournament. Is that right? Well, I, I debated whether um, that might give the team a better run at the tournament because I felt there was a period where um, there, was, there was negativity about me being in charge. Um, and the last thing I wanted was for that to be the overarching feeling going into a World Cup when actually you need the fans and everybody behind the team you need that energy you need that sense of togetherness and if the debate was only going to be about finding flaws in what we were doing in order that I go at the end then that would have been very difficult for the team to perform at their best so I think the second half against Germany was a really important moment within that um, w the crowd weren't against us at Wembley at all but they were a little bit waiting to see how things were going to go and when we came back and we played so well in that second half. I think everybody left Wembley in a bit more of a positive feel. I think the team gained belief back from hitting the back of the net again and remembering what they could be. And that gave us a good lead into the tournament where it was then going to be about how we played and, and what results we could get. What you're saying then is the noise at the time actually does have a, an impact on you personally, but also on the players. Yeah, on the team is the is the key because you know I've been in football thirty years and I know that you've got to come through those periods as an individual. Um, part of being uh, a manager is dealing with pressure and dealing with those games where you know um, there's there's so much resting on it. Um, but it's whether it's when those things start to affect the performances of the team, and it means that there's a dis there can be a disconnect. That's when it can be dangerous for for the progress of the team. And you know, although I love the job and I I want to do the job, uh, I also don't want to be somebody that's here and and hindering um, the performance of the team just because I'm you know I'm the person in charge. That's a very sort of professional approach to your responsibility. What about personally? Does it hurt? to have that criticism, to have that reaction from fans? Oh, I, don't, I don't think anybody would choose to walk over at the end of a game and um, uh, and, and get abuse, but I, I've also been in football long enough to know that uh, I've had it over the years, I can deal with it, and um, you've got to lead your players through those moments as well. So, yeah, I, I, I don't think anybody could say they enjoy it, but it also isn't going to determine exactly what I do and what I don't do. You said at the end of the tournament, you still wanted to have a think, you still were undecided. What made you decide to stay? I, I was fairly clear in my mind as the tournament was progressing, mainly because of how we were playing, the feel I had with the players and the staff. Um, and I think the acknowledgement from everybody that the team were, were playing well and um, are showing signs of progress. So, of course, uh, ultimately we've got to get over the line in these in these biggest biggest games now but bar France we've probably been as consistent across three tournaments as any other country and um, that's that's the aim that we've had here at, at St George's Park for a long time if we're consistently in those latter stages then in the end 
we'll learn how to win those big games. Mm. Some will say, you've had three tournaments and you haven't managed to do that, as you've just said. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to those who think you know, a change of voice, a change of face might be a good thing? Yeah, but look, look you're, you're always going to have that. So um, I feel the team's improving. I think the experience now of those knockout matches, we've got a lot of experience of those games and we're seeing a really good version of ourselves in those matches. Um, that you know, there will always be uh, um, the the thought that somebody else could do things differently, um, and I'm not going to affect people's thinking on that until we actually go and win something. So, I've got to close myself off from that noise and accept it's going to happen. Um, that's a debate that can carry on, but I'm I'm here to take England forward as I have been for the last well six years with the seniors, but ten years around. The, the, the whole project and um, we're determined to go the next step. Is that a debate you ever have with yourself about whether you've taken this group of players as far as you possibly can? Um, I, I think you're always looking for how we can improve and we're always looking for what are the fine margins that we're looking at now because in the beginning to go from 14th in the world to being in the top four or five as we've been pretty consistently now that was maybe easier than to go from where we are now to winning. You know, we're still having to overcome history. We're still having to break barriers down that um, we haven't been able to do for decades, and um, that that's difficult. You know, we, and we also have uh, a mixture of situations with our players in terms of um, depth and, uh, and in certain positions in particular. So. It's never straightforward, but we're trying to do something extraordinary, and that, that means a lot of hard work and a lot of heartache at times. Is there a lack of nastiness or killer instinct in, in an England team? Is it as simple as that, do you think? No, I, I don't think there's simple solutions to any of those problems. I mean, for years, um, we, we've often, well, th there've been tournaments we haven't qualified for, there've been tournaments where we've lost games in our group stage that we should have won, which has meant we've had a harder path to get through in the knockout stages. So we've been nailing those things and making, you know, complicated things look fairly straightforward in the last few tournaments. The, the last bit is to, is to beat the big teams. And I, I don't think over the years we've necessarily been at the level of those big teams. Um, I think now the performance against France has shown the players if they didn't believe it before, which uh, I still wonder whether w they, they truly believed before the game, um, w coming off the field they know that's a game they could win and should have won given how, how the flow of the game went and all the stats and data afterwards would tell them. So I think sometimes you, you have to win those games or to be in those games to realise how close you are. and. I think they'll be more confident now after the last couple of tournaments and um, knowing that they've been to a final, but also they've now played, you know, arguably the best or second best team in the world and really should have won the game. I think that will give them belief going into the Euros. On that game, do you have any regrets about your part in that? I, I don't really, no. Um, I mean, people will question whether a, a different change could have been made or because when you don't win obviously the things that haven't happened are the thing are the opportunity for people to criticize what you did but yeah I mean people were surprised that Marcus Rashford didn't get more of a game given his form that's one yeah, example but I think people are looking at his form post tournament as much as anything uh, with that I mean Marcus hadn't been with us for 18 months so in many ways we were still getting Marcus back into our group and had had Marcus played then and the result been like that, they'd have been saying Phil Foden should have been on or Jack Grealish. So I've 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 got peace with what we did and how we went about it and um I also know that's how the narrative always works after our games. Harry Kane obviously missing that penalty was a, a big moment for him. You've been through something mm. similar. His form has been superb since he came back mm. from Qatar, which seems to suggest he, he's bounced back. How difficult has that been for him? And have you had conversations with him about to help him through this period? Mm. Well, I, I spoke with him immediately after and, um, and a few days after. And just to reassure him that, firstly, he's one of the best penalty takers in the world. Um, but even the best hit of around 85%. 
So at some point, the the miss is coming or the save is coming, unfortunately. And for for him, it was in that moment. But also, that wasn't the sole reason that we were out of the tournament. You know, had he scored, we're we're two two. So there's still a, a lot to do to win the game. Um, and we should have been better with the goals we conceded and there were other opportunities in the game to score so um, that we've always said we win and lose together it was the same um, in the Euros and it was the same in this tournament It was a tournament like no other obviously it involved you addressing you and the players addressing many issues that you don't normally have to do you think too much is expected of, of you and of your squad on these political issues, these moral issues, has it become a distraction? I think we managed it as well as we could have. Um, I, I don't think that we allowed it to become a distraction. And um, I know talking to some other coaches from other countries, they felt differently about that. Um, there was a moment where I think we had to really lock down onto what we were there to do primarily, which was to try to win a, f a football tournament. Um, but of course, we're aware of the power of our voice and we're aware that we can have an impact on, on things. So we don't dismiss that, but also we know that we've got to find the right balance with those things. FA Cup this weekend, the, ne mm. the next round of games. Um, it's, it's a competition that's obviously very important to English football fans, but it's important mm. to you because of your history in it, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, my history is not as, as much as I'd like. I'm looking at that trophy and I've... You know, I've not had my hands on it, so uh, I, I had a lot of semi-finals in particular. Um, and of course the clubs I played at really um, don't have a great history of, of, of winning those trophies. So Villa was probably the only one that uh, where we got to the final and got really close. Um, but the, the tournament, you know, I've grown up watching it. You know, my earliest memories of football are watching the FA Cup final because it was the only game that was shown live bar probably England Scotland um, when I was a youngster and uh, it, that grew my love of the competition and um, that that remains today it's still the the beauty of the competition as it's always been and also as your role as England boss now it gives you the opportunity to see your players your squad or, or potentially those who might be in your squad playing in high pressure games hmm. in knockout football that must be really important yeah, it is. There's um, there's that aspect, and also the fact that the FA Cup is often a, um, the first opportunity for young players to come into their teams as well and to get um, competitive experience under pressure, and um, that that's very important for us because we still have a lack of depth in in terms of young players playing in the league. Uh, you know, we're still at around thirty percent of the league uh, are qualified to play for England. That's very low. So the opportunity for them to cut their teeth in the cup competition sometimes and establish themselves in the team is really invaluable. Did you, is that a real issue for you, looking ahead, that yeah, percentage? Uh, without a doubt. You know, we have um, a perception that we've got huge depth of talent, but we actually have less players playing in the big five leagues than most of our rivals. And um, the, the numbers in the Premier League are this season have diminished again so that that is a concern for, for England moving forward Do you ever look at the FA Cup and see the club managers and think I fancy doing that again <laughs> one day or that, or do you then reflect on what's happened to Frank Lampard this week and think no I'm rather I'm happy where I am oh, All I think is that I'm in a job with the chance to make some history and I have a privilege of leading the national team it's been an unbelievable experience um I think we've made progress with the team across the the years we've been in charge. You know, I'm determined to try and drive the team that that next step. And um, of course, we've got to qualify first, and that's a, a complicated process in itself. Um, yeah, it's not an easy group, is it? No, no, no. I mean, we've got to go to uh, to Naples with probably three days with the team before the game. So we have to start um, we have to start well right from the go. And do you see a much different squad to the one you took to Qatar? It felt a little bit like a changing of the guard in Qatar. Am I, am I right? Um, I think um, we're, we're always trying to get that balance of evolving the team um, whilst trying to win matches. And 
I think we've managed to do that by integrating young young players over the years and when they're ready they'll get their opportunity so we need that competition for places we can never have complacency in the group um, and equally there are key players that have great experience that for games like going away in Italy you, you do need those sorts of players as well. But the youngsters in your squad are, are, are a special group aren't they and I guess that must have played into your decision thinking I don't really want to watch somebody else mm. in charge of this group that I've created. Yeah I, I'm less worried about that because it, maybe at a club you'd have a different view of you know, leaving something behind and somebody taking over and doing well. I, I want England to do well forever so whenever I leave this role I'm still an England fan I want them to do well so I'm not I'm not worried about playing young players that I might not see the benefits of um, that that's still got to be part of the process um, but equally you know I want to, to try and win with this team. Given it's your last tournament winning it is probably the only thing that you'd find acceptable. Well we, we don't know it's my last tournament yet but um, I think now um, we're in a different landscape to any previous England team, I guess, because of the success we've had. In our own minds, winning is probably the only thing that's going to fulfil us. Um, of course, if that's the only way we're judged as a team, then that's very difficult for the team to succeed. But um, that has to be the challenge for us. We've gone so close now. We've been consistent across three tournaments um, to the level that only France have, have had collectively three better tournaments I would say and, and they didn't manage a semi-final in the Euros. Uh, just finally, um, you're obviously content with the decision you made and looking forward to the future. Your family as happy as you are given the, the time it consumes of you? Yeah, no, they, they left Doha saying you know, we've, you've got to give this one more go and uh, try to get try to get this trophy so um, yeah, you know, I'm lucky. I've got a very supportive um, home, and uh, they know the, the job comes with its challenges. But they're also very comfortable with what I do.